Hey skaters, today I will review the Leica on GR, the best budget board that's now in the market. Let's go! This board has one year and it was used with a daily basis and it has some minor changes that you will notice along the way but it's hanging pretty well and it's hard to break any component of this board. This board is meant for beginners but it has a lot of power and top speed and a lot of the components are thought in this direction. The deck is made of 8-ply Canadian maple, it's stiff, it has no flares, no concave, it's totally straight. It brings a standard grip tape with a Leica on board logo. Not this one, this is one of the minor changes I was talking about before. The board is 37 inches long, 94 cm, and 9 inches wide, 23 cm. And it has a 30 inches long wheelbase, 78 cm, with a max load of 220 pounds, kind of 100 kilos, with a weight of 19 pounds, kind of 8.6 kilos, the tracks are the usual caliber style ones, made of high tensile CNC magnesium aluminum alloy. The bushes that brings are brandless hard ones, which means that the turning ability will be reduced, but this is meant for speed and for beginners. If you are an experienced rider, you will change these bushings for a softer ones, so you will improve your turning radius. This is one of the main complaints of this board. People love to carve and these bushings are not meant to that. But if you love speed or you are a downhiller, you will love this setup. The wheels are the standard 90mm ones with a 54mm width that will give you a balance between acceleration and the speed that will give you a good ride in a bumpy asphalt. The harness of these wheels are 83A this means that Leica on decided to go to the softer option. This will bring you more grip to the ground, but the wheels will last less. It comes with two hub motors. This means that the motor is inside the wheel. The advantage of this system is that the motors will be silent and will be invisible at the naked eye. This board comes with a 480 hub motors. These motors have a top speed of 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers hour. This is a lot of speed for a beginner, so it will cover the range between a beginner and intermediate rider and give you a lot of fun with it. With this power, it has the ability of 30% hill climbing, which is pretty good and it's hard to find cities with more than that. Remember that this hill climbing is for a limited time. If you try to go a lot of time, you will have some overheat problems with almost any board. This board is equipped with a battery that the industry usually calls long range. Usually the standard boards come with a 4A battery. This board comes with a 7.5A battery that is around 270 mAh. This means almost double the range as a standard board. And this is important because when we talk about the price, you will understand why this board is so good. This battery has a setup of 10S3P with 18650 battery cells in it. This will give you a range around 15 to 20 miles range or 25 to 30 kilometers. I'm a rider of 210 pounds, around 100 kilos, and I made a 22-23 kilometers range, like a 16 miles. This is accomplished with a medium mode. This board comes with a 2.5A charger that will charge your board in 5 to 6 hours, but you have an option 
of buying the fast charger that will fully charge your board between three to four hours. That it's a good option because it's a three amp charger, which is one amp per pile, which will not stress your battery and will give you more fast charging, which it's always good. At the time of the purchase of this board, this came with a Lingi ESC that comes with this remote. The good thing about this ESC, electronic speed controller, is that it's snappier and I like that. It brings you more torque and more brake and it's powerful, but it's not that careful with motors. But now this board comes with the new Hobbywing ESC. What's the difference between these two ESC? The main thing is that the Hobbywing is smoother and has more care of the motors. Usually people like more this kind of ESC because the acceleration curve is more friendly and the brake curve too. And now comes with a screen. Both ESC controls the board with wheels and have almost the same buttons. This remote has three modes. The first mode that was usually called Eco it's the easiest one and if you want to max the range and you are learning, this is your mode. The second mode reaches the top speed, the 25 miles per hour bar 40 km hour. And the third mode, it's exactly the same as the mid mode but with more torque and more brake. This, room, this ESC comes with a reverse option, which is good because a lot of people like to go backwards and a lot of people like to ride with the motors in front. This is a good feature that I prefer to keep, so good hobby win. One of the things I like of this board are the enclosures that are made of steel and they have a rating of 54 IP, which is good for splashes and a little wet. But remember, this is not covered by warranty by any brand. Let's talk about the price. The price of this board is $400, which might seem a lot because, for example, the Mipo B3 is $389, but if you look at the specs of this board, as I told you before, the batteries of this board is more and more extensive. If you want the same battery, for example, on a Mipo, you will have to pay $249 more. They are priced at $649. This board is priced as a standard electric skateboard, but it has an extended range battery, which is really good because in the beginning, you will love to go to work and come commuting a little bit, but in the long term, you will want a board to visit your friends, to go to town, to visit the city, etc. And you will love to have this extra juice. Another difference of Lycaon against other brands is that they took the components of the shelf, tested and durable components. They don't try to be the high-tech company. They don't fight to have the latest components. I think their strategy is to sell good boards with good components that last longer, that have little to none issues. They prefer to have happy customers that paid a fair price for their boards with good features and low fail ratio. So this is my review of this board. My main complaint is the bushings, but you can change it super easily. If you like to be more comfort, maybe you will like more a uh, flexi deck. But in overall, this board for the price, it's a steal. I really like and enjoy the ride with it. And if you are a beginner and, or an intermediate that wants more range, this is a great board. Now with Hobby Wing, that it's more reliable, more smoother, so I think you can't ask more for less. If you enjoyed this review, you can like, share and comment if you have any thought, any question or if you want to choose the next board I will review. And as always, subscribe with the bell and see you in the next video.